Welcome back. It is the Coca-Cola of Kokomo kickoff special here on the ISC Sports Network. As always, thanks to Brandon Bishop and the good folks at Coca-Cola of Kokomo. Again, they service over 25 high schools in north central Indiana and all the schools that you see here on our special today. You can always find out more about them at ccokomo.com or follow on Twitter at Kokomo Coke. We will have two segments dedicated to talk about Northwestern this year and players only in this one. Gabriel Felix is to my left. Garrett Jolliffe, Cameron Davis to my right. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. And, Gabriel, I'll, I'll start with you. Uh, just kind of your thoughts on uh, heading into this season. A couple of wins last year that may not sound like much for some, but it's the best that you guys have been in a while. So just kind of your, your confidence level heading into the fall of 2023. Um, I think that we're going to be uh, enormously better than we have been in the past just because of our work ethic and uh, – coming up with more team workouts. And when we had our off week, we had a lot of team workouts that we were doing together and building as a community. Garrett, I, I know this is a program that historically has had success. It's been kind of elusive for you guys over the last few years. What kind of tells you that you and your teammates are pointed in the right direction? Uh, yeah, just the overall turnout that we had this summer and uh, the amount of work we put in. And uh, yeah, I just think we got a lot of good work in this summer. Cameron, there has been obviously a lot of work that you and your teammates have put in. Maybe that hasn't resulted, on, not maybe, it hasn't resulted in the number of wins that you wanted to. What's kind of kept you and your buddies motivated to, to keep playing and, and, and keep kind of putting your nose to the grindstone like that? We just know that we can be the group that changes the culture and we can change what happens here. Mm -hmm. So we know that, that what we do will set the foundation for the next ages coming up. My guess is, and Garrett, I'll start with you on this one, that you guys have already changed the culture. It's just now a matter of, of kind of getting those results to happen. Do you feel good kind of about the bond that you guys have and, and, and the work you put in so oh, yeah. far this summer? Definitely. I feel great. Cameron, when you look back, obviously, at just a couple of wins, but better than what you had the year before. Take me through a couple of highlights last year. When you think back to the good moments from last season, what immediately comes to mind? Well, when we had our first win against Twin Lakes that first week, yeah, the whole community stormed the field after we won that first game. It, it felt great. Kind of got the reward for doing what you do, right? Right. Gabriel, same question to you. If you think back to your season a year ago, what, what are kind of the favorite things that come to your mind? Um, when, well, again, our first win because that was uh, sort of the rolling stone for changing the culture for our community. And then uh, just the teamwork that came into it and then the overall building of the culture that the foundation was set last year, and we are hoping to get it rolling this year. Cam, what's it like playing for Coach Patchett? I love him. I mean, <laughs> he's been great. He's helped every one of us, not just playing football, but being better people. Kind of, Garrett, same thing for you, uh, experience of playing for Coach Patchett. There, there had been such kind of turnover. Now that's not been the case these last two or three years. You guys get to graduate with largely having the same coach for most of your high school experience. What's it like been playing for Coach? It's been great. He's helped us a lot in the weight room, the classroom, and on the field as well. All right, sounds good. Gabriel, what's, what are some of the goals that you and your teammates have set for this year? What's going to make this a, a good fall for you? Um, just overall getting the culture moving to proceed for the next upcoming classes and obviously getting more wins than we have and, maybe, and having a winning record this year. Uh, last year we went 2-8, and eight and we're hoping to go 8-2 and two this year. I like it. All right, Garrett, same question to you. What's going to make this fall a good one for you? Um, just everybody coming together, having a fun time. Last year, go out there, play hard. Cam, same thing for you. What's going to make this a good season for you? Just everybody coming together. We're playing hard. We're playing as one. And the senior parents have really been great, and we've had – a bunch of stuff planned, and it'll be a great senior year. All right, let's talk about positions. Cam, what all you playing this year? I'm a wide receiver and defensive back. Garrett? Tied in D-line. All right, and you, I assume, you're left tackle and nose tackle, right? <laughs> Not wearing number 10. What, what positions do you play? I'm a wide receiver and a defensive back. Very cool. Guys, I know, again, you have started the process of getting it turned around. I can tell there's good things going to happen for you. Guys, thanks for the time, and best of luck. Thank Sir, you. We'll, thank you. we'll come back with one more player representing Northwestern Plus. Coach Pasha will join us as well as you're watching the 2023 Coca-Cola of Kokomo kickoff special here on the ISC Sports Network. Talking more about the Northwestern Tigers here on the ISC Sports Network. To my right, it's the head coach, Inra Patchett. 
To my left, it is Owen Peel. Coach, we will start with you. First of all, welcome back to the show. Now, year number three of being back as the head coach at Northwestern. What is it about this program and this community that kind of keeps you coming back? Well, I'll tell you what, Greg, our, our community is amazing. Um, they have totally bought in. When you come into a program that's been down like this for so long, um, not only are you trying to rebuild the kids, but you're trying to rebuild the community support around it. And uh, I, uh, when I got here, I met some, with some members of the community and, and some key moms and um, started a football booster club, and, and we kind of re-energized that. And so if you come to one of the Northwestern football games now, even though last year wasn't as successful as we'd like to see it, you see tailgating going on. You see uh, parents out there supporting. You see all these things that what Friday night should look like. And, and it wasn't like that when I first got there. Um, so our parents and our booster club have done an amazing job in supporting us, not only in the community, but helping us get the things that we need uh, and helping us financially as well uh, with the new uniforms and all those kinds of things. Um, and they've just done an amazing job. And, and so uh, I'm not sure we would be building as fast as we are without their help. Those are the things that are progressing off the field and obviously tremendously important. Progress is going from no wins to two. What are the other areas of, of, of progress you're seeing when it comes to on the field for your team? Well, when we went back and reviewed the year last year, we're pretty angry that we didn't win five or six, to be honest. I mean, we turned the ball over quite a bit, uh, which really, I, we, we honestly believe we could have won five or six games had we not turned the ball over so much. But, uh, you know, when you, when you gauge the process, you look at weight room numbers, for one, and how many kids are in the weight class. And our weight numbers are as good as anybody's, if not better than a lot of people's right now. Um, our overall team speed is much, much better. Um, our overall understanding about how to play football is different. I mean, you know, I, I can tell a kid to get in a pass, pass pro set and all this stuff now, and he knows what I mean. Right. <laughs> um, and, and before, that wasn't always the case. So, um, and, and the quality of our athletes has improved, and their work ethic and the things they do away. I tell them all the time, if you want to be great, you have to work when nobody's watching. And we got a lot of kids to do that. Owen, for instance, is, a, is an all-state kicker and punter. And um, if you follow Instagram and, and Twitter, you'll see Owen on there all the time kicking and doing all these extra things. And, and a lot of these kids are doing these extra things outside of our own workouts. So football has become important again to a lot of these kids, and, and I think that's really going to help us in the long run. Tell us about your senior class. Well, our senior class, uh, you saw the, all these guys, of yep. course. Um, and we, we got a, some other guys, actually a big senior class for us this year. Um, we got, uh, of course, Cam, who's quarterback, wide receiver, DB. Owen, of course, kicker, punter. Now, Owen's actually one of the best athletes on the team, and we trick him on occasion of playing DB, too. <laughs> um, and then Garrett, of course, is a tight end, a defensive end, and Gabe. Uh, Gabe's a great player. Uh, Gabe's a wide receiver. Gabe can actually play in, in several different places. Um, but really one of the places we've improved a lot is on the offensive and defensive line. And one of the guys that's really worked hard to become a better lineman is a kid named Alec Forez. He's going to be an offensive and defensive lineman. Um, and then uh, um, Thomas Kennedy also is going to be a senior offensive and defensive lineman. And these guys have been playing for three years. And they, got, they were in the wars when they were young and getting beat up. And I think uh, they're really ready to uh, kind of turn that page a little bit. And then, of course, uh, we have a young man named John Keeney, who is a great athlete as well. He's a wide receiver, defensive back, uh, comes from a great family, military family, and John shows that discipline and works hard every day. And then we got three new players this year, which is awesome for us. Uh, a young man named Jacob Benj. Uh, I, I kind of uh, talked him into playing football out of the weight room class because he was running. He was strong for his size. Uh, he's going to play DB and wide receiver. Uh, a kid named Steven Slate, also from the weight class. And then uh, I hired a new coach this year, jo Josh Whaley, who's been a longtime Western teacher. And he's got a young son that's a, that's a really good baseball player named Easton. And uh, there was no pressure from me or dad. And Easton just said, hey, hey I want to come out and try this. So now we have uh, Easton Whaley also as a senior on the Northwestern football team. And Easton will probably be a, a DB and wide receiver. All right. Well, I'll get back to you in a second. I'll make sure we get Owen included here as well. So I'm, I'm always intrigued how, you know, guys that end up being football players – kind of end up going the kicker and punter route. So explain that path for me. So when I was in middle school, I looked up, I've always looked up to kickers. I don't know what it is, but I just always wanted to be that guy and have the pressure. So so much of being a, a punter or kicker at the college or professional level is mental training, almost, almost like what a, what a golfer would go through. And so what sort of mental skills do you kind of work on to, to sharpen and be game ready when your number is called? <laughs> I just shut all the sound and everything out and just lock in. From a kicker or punter standpoint at the next level, you think there's an opportunity there for you? 
Yeah, that's what I'm looking to do. Is it, is it one or both at this point? Probably one. All right. What's, what's as long of a field goal as Coach will let you try in a game? Probably 40, 45. It's not bad. I guess. Yeah. All right. What's the longest you've hit in a game so far? 23. 23. Mm-hmm. All right. We, we'll see if we can get him to let you try. Let's <laughs> and, and he said he'll sneak you out on the field to play a little defense. You're okay yeah. with that? Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. So, like, when, when on a kickoff, you're not just, you know, kind of hanging back. You're trying to go out there and make the tackle, right? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, you heard what I talked with some of the guys about in terms of goals and, and, and signs you're improving. What are some of the goals? I, we talked about some of the individual things. But as a team, what are some of the goals you've set for this coming year? Obviously win games, win a lot of games, and just get closer with all the guys and have a good senior year. This is now your third year of playing for Coach Patch, and he talked about the way the culture has improved, and that was the word that was said by all three of your teammates that were up here. I heard everyone go, culture, culture, culture. So clearly that is something you guys have been working on. What are some of the things that you see that's telling you that's improving? Our mindsets, the way we carry ourselves, the way we work in the weight room, practices. Just everything. Very good. Owen, best of luck and have a, have a wonderful senior Thank season. You. All right, so now the same question for you. You talked about, hey, we take better care of the football. You're a 500 team last year, maybe a little bit over it. What are some of the goals you've set for your guys this year? Well, we, we have certainly been focusing all summer on turnovers. Um, you know, if we turn the ball over, we go whole team, 100-yard up-downs. It uh, doesn't matter if it's one guy. Kicker uh, included. Kicker, kicker, kicker okay, so included. Sure, yep. Um, you know, um, and, and to be honest, I mean, uh, Cam Davis and, and Brock Shank are competing for quarterback, but Brock's right now probably in the lead, and Brock was our, our main quarterback last year, but he was a sophomore. Um, and, and he is looking way better this year than he did a year ago. Uh, he's getting smarter with the football. Um, now, having said that, half of our turnovers were also fumbles. Um, and, and I just told him the other day, we're, we're not turning the football over this year. Um, so, you know, and some of that could have been we weren't as good up front, and so guys were taking hits for the ready and, and all that kind of stuff. But um, I'm, I'm extremely optimistic that if we, if we take care of the football and tackle better, um, we've done a lot of tackling this summer as well, um, that, that we're going to have a pretty good year. Plus, now they all understand what we're trying to do a little bit better. Um, and, and, you know, I think just – so many guys get caught up in, we're going to run this system, we're going to do this system. Well, the system isn't what wins you games. I've coached in several different schools. Um, you go to Eric Moore, he runs a wing tee, but he's not going to tell you that we win because we run the wing tee. He's going to tell you we win because we work harder in the weight room and we condition better than anybody else. I coach for Jake Gilbert. Jake Gilbert runs a spread. He's not a wing tee guy. But when I was at Westwood High School, we worked harder in the weight room yep. and we outconditioned everybody we played. Um, we're not always going to athlete them, but we can play harder and we can play smarter regardless of the system. All the systems work. I know that obviously how, how football coaches work and coaches, frankly, in all sports, and it's I'm going to take care of what's in front of me. So your focus is the first week of practice. And after that, it'll be kind of the scrimmage. And then it's the season opener. I am going to ask you a bit of a long-term question here, though. Northwestern is one of the many schools that, that is kind of looking for a new conference identity. You guys are switching leagues at the conclusion of this year. Yes. Your thoughts on that move going from the Hoosier to the TRC a year from now? Well, you know, I mean, the Hoosier Conference is a great uh, football conference. I think it's maybe one of the best small school conferences. But the problem with the Hoosier Conference is, uh, for us anyway, is that the Hoosier Conference is becoming a lot of large schools. Yeah. Um, and, and, and particularly where we're at right now in our, in our process uh, of trying to get better, um, we don't need to be playing four and five A schools. And a lot of those schools are going to be four and five A schools. Now, having said that, when I was in high school, I actually played in the TRC. Yep. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a homecoming for me. And uh, I always thought back in those days, I mean, back then you had O'Kill who was winning state championships. You had North Miami who was winning state championships. Um, you know, we were really good at Eastern back when, when we played at the TRC. Uh, Whitco, I think, was a state runner-up when I was there in those years. So the TRC has a great tradition, too, and we, we, uh, we're going from a great conference, but we're also going into a great conference, and hopefully we can enhance that conference well. I know as well. you'll worry about that after you get through this fall. I know, obviously, you've got your goal set on uh, more than doubling that two-win total uh, for what you did a year ago. But I also know that you're doing it through the process, as you talk about outwork them, outcondition them, the results will pay off on Friday nights. Rob, I know you get there, buddy. Thank you, Greg. Good to see you as always. Thank you for having us. The Northwestern Tigers coming up to join us. When we come back, we're going to talk about the young men from Carroll High School. That's when we come back as you're watching the 2023 Coca-Cola of kickoff, uh, Coca-Cola of Kokomo, there we go, kickoff special, back in a moment on ISC. Many communities in rural America are often overlooked as underserved. 
These communities are being left behind due to lack of internet and access to state-of-the-art technology. That's why Mulberry Telecommunications provides rural broadband services and technology and is growing their presence in North Central Indiana because every community deserves infrastructure and beyond. To learn more, contact us today.